the new Genesis GV70. And all these numbers may confuse you, but the GV moniker, the V moniker, stands for the SUV lineup. So this is the new direction the company is taking in terms of in interior space. And what it does is it further separates itself from the Hyundai brand, something that I complained about on the previous generation products, where you could see the connection to like the Sonata and some of their mainstream products. When you look at this interior space, and granted this is fully loaded, you see the attention to detail here that is a combination of what you see in some of the German products and the Asian Japanese products, and it is a great blend. Take a look at the door panel. We talk about this incessantly. When you see the design, this is what greets you. The black finish that is almost carbon fiber, but it looks like this high-end texture that you would put maybe in a kitchen or a home space the alloy look on the door handles and the grills, and just the flowing lines across the whole car with this rounded edge to everything from the steering wheel bezel to the HVAC control bezel to the rounded textures and feel of the shift knob and the infotainment controller. This feels vastly more expensive than it really is. So what's the other pros? Well, seating comfort, visibility is pretty good you feel like you're in a high-end luxury car. That's what they're trying to do here. The refinement, acoustic laminated glass. You feel like you're in a quiet space. The microfiber or Alcantara headliner. That It's all about deadening the sound, deadening the exterior environment. And then when you drive, you feel a sense of peace. Now, in terms of technology, this is where Hyundai really spends a ton of money. The HVAC controls are physical yet digital, so it bridges the gap between the German products. The gauge cluster borrows what we saw on the GV80 with the 3D cluster. The problem is aliasing. It's really bad when you go into 3D mode, but when you turn it off, everything smooths out. There's no jagged edges to all the graphics, so I just leave the 3D part off. Obviously, you don't have to have that in the lower trims. The infotainment goes to this ultra-wide aspect ratio screen. Black levels are good. The speed in which this interface operates is far better than the previous generations. It feels and looks every bit of its price tag. Getting around is touch, it's rotary knob, it's touchpad control. You have everything that you want here. And yes, it is a little bit convoluted to get around, but you get used to it much quicker than what you get in the Mercedes products. It's more on par with some of the BMW stuff. But again, it feels less Hyundai and Kia overall. So comfort is great. You have massaging seats on the driver's side, but not on the passenger. The back seat room is about average of what you expect in this segment. And the overall capacity matches that of the BMW X3. So when you raise the hatch in the back, your, your load floor is a bit higher, but overall, it's what you expect in this segment. And they do a good job in pretty much every single area. There's far less gimmicks here. There's no piano block, black pretty much anywhere. And the audio system is a huge highlight. The Lexicon audio gives you the ability to go from a reference audio setup to kind of like that fakish 3D surround sound thing. And when you keep it in reference mode, it is a very neutral system. The noise floor is low in here, so it benefits that. The space is bigger. And when you keep everything neutralized, the bass isn't boomy like we've heard in other products. It's just a really flat experience, but it lacks some depth in the highs and it lacks some depth in the mids. But you can kind of equalize that out with the EQ that's built into this car, but you can take a look at the audio graphs. But really, this attention to detail in here is the strongest point of any Genesis product that they've ever built, and you're going to really be impressed with this interior space. Let's head into the shop and talk about some of the technical parts of it. Mark, we're underneath the all-new Genesis GV70. This is their new entry-level SUV, and this is really an American product, despite being from a Korean brand, because in Korea, their home market, they are a more sedan-focused buying environment. They much prefer large, cushy sedans over large SUVs. But, nevertheless, this is a very important product, because here in the United States, mid-sized, entry-level luxury SUVs. That's where the SUV. money is yep. at, okay? That's what it's about. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be all sedans. So this market requires something like this. Why is it special? Because this is Korean and it's a real premium mark. Now, really, it's special because unlike the GV80. Their G80 is really their flagship architecture. Yeah. It's where you see all the aluminum, double wishbone suspension, multi-link, high-end materials, 
room for rear wheel steering. Basically, all the money was thrown at that, and I don't know what they're gonna do, how they're gonna scale that up, but this is a cutoff. The G70 and the GV70 are half of what that car is because you have the strut front, they've re redone the front end to cut cost, to shrink down size and packaging, so it's strut front, although it's a, a split lower control arm, it looks very much like what the Europeans are doing with their struts. Like but they didn't BMW. cheapen this up versus the G70. Correct. They did that for the GV80 versus the G80. Yeah, the GV70 has a lot more luxury appointments. The entire body is covered with sound deadening material that you don't see on the G70. So obviously acoustic laminated glass, all the things that they do, the isolators and the dampers are on the damper bodies. There's a whole bunch of things they do to, to cancel out that undo experience from the road and the world around you. Speaking of that, Mark, let's talk about the engine before we completely dive into the suspension and the architecture of this car. This is this has the 3.5 liter turbocharged V6, where the G70 gets a 3.3. That is a legacy engine. This is a new engine. That is an interesting difference between the two vehicles. I'm honestly surprised they put the 3.5 in this because the 3.3, other than the fact that they already have it, there's real no reason for them to keep it. Is that a fair assessment? Uh, it could be something internally in terms of cost. They already have a surplus of 3.3s sitting somewhere in a warehouse where they've built them out and want to clear out that inventory for the older legacy product because the GV70 is all new. Yes. Although it is on the same architecture as the G70, it has been changed. You're getting the updated engine and transmission programming, all of that stuff. So this is, this is Genesis the face of this company yeah. going forward. They also have a four popper, which is the four popper you've seen in other vehicles. It makes about 300 horsepower. And the nice thing about that is it comes in at $41,000. And there's a massive price spread in the GV70. You can start in the low 40s, or in this car's case, you can be in the mid 60s, which puts you in competition with things like the X3 with their B58 and the SQ5 and some other really high-end cars, which makes you question the value proposition of this brand, but at the same time, as we're about to talk about a little bit more, this from a technology perspective is every bit as the Germans at this point. So Mark, with that, let's hit the road. All right. We're in a GV70, Mark. This has got the 3.5 liter twin turbo. It's fully loaded and it has this nice matte mahogany, burgundy color, purple. It's, it looks plum, but whatever. Let's not talk about the outside, Jack. I want to feel the power. All right, launch control. It's like being like headbutted by a turtle. <laughs> The unnecessarily harsh shifts in Sport Plus that they've added here in combination with launch control is what to me that I think of is I can't wait when they put this engine and the tuning of this transmission into something more remarkable in terms of a fun car. But as it stands, what do you think of the, Q the GV70? This is the world's most forgettable segment of automobile, right? Small luxury SUVs put, put both of us to sleep. Right. It's mm -hmm. something that as soon as we get out of, we normally forget about. And that is, it's just a matter of fact, right? Most people aren't particularly excited by uh, mid-sized SUVs. It's a sad truth. But this is also a segment that for some reason seems to be less competitive than the sports sedan segment in my mind. Like the G70 versus this, this is a much stronger offering because I feel like there are less competent offerings in this segment of vehicle, right? Yeah. With the V6 in this car, it is expensive, and it is every bit as expensive as like an SQ5, X3, M40i, and like a GLC 53 or 43 AMG. But to me at least, this car has a lot of character because when people are buying vehicles like this, mm -hmm. it's not just driving dynamics. In yeah. fact, driving dynamics, as long as it rides good, people don't really care about it. It's, is it quiet? Does it look good? Does it have a nice cabin? And in those areas, this car is excellent. I would 100% agree with you on that. And to me, the standout thing about this is it feels extraordinarily unique to Genesis. I mean, I know you could argue the Audi, the, the German influence here, but to me, the, the outside and the inside are so cohesive along with the engine offering that this is less forgettable 
then when you said, oh, would you rather have a X3 or this? I would take this 10 out of 10 times because I feel like I'm in a special space. The updated interior, the outside, and obviously you're not going to get matte paint if you're using this every day. But the fact that they, they have offered it, it looks far more different and unique than all the other doldrum, like, compact SUV things that are out there. And this is why it's starting to make sedans more irrelevant because you're getting most of the performance of a, a, a sedan. You're getting all-wheel drive and you're getting the cargo capacity that the sedan don't have so I see why it's popular but in terms of a, a driving experience what is it good at and that's where this car is more difficult to support because I think an SQ5 or like a Macan which is way more money blow this thing out of the water when it comes mm. to a car being you know, a dynamic joy or the X3 would be inline six the P58 has a better gear gearbox as the F in this is a much better gearbox than the, than the Hyundai or Genesis gearbox, and the motor feels more powerful, more refined. But still, for most people, under you know eighty percent of its limit, you're really not going to notice a big difference in my mind. If you're just going to be cruising at the highway at higher speeds between like sixty and eighty miles an hour, all you care about is passing power, immediacy of passing power, whether or not it's going to be in the right gear, or what if you're in town, is there enough power to get away from a light quickly? This car is perfect. It rides well. It's a little stiffer, much like an X3 yeah. or like an SQ5, but it's to be expected with this level of performance. It's exactly what most people are looking for. It lacks the 5% extra that yeah. an SQ5 or an X3 has. But, again, who cares? In this segment of car, are you yeah. really doing slalom limit I, handling. I, exactly, and I think that was my problem when we got in the X3M, which is a total different ball game here, but, you know, it's like, why? You know, why? When, you know, 95% of your commute is just like this, you're putting around, and I think what this excels with is just giving you enough power, giving you enough transmission responsiveness, enough smoothness, good ride control. It's just quiet enough, although it's not super quiet when you get it out above 65 on the it highway. It's weirdly, it has very limited wind noise, but a lot of tire noise. Okay. Which, it's probably a body structure decision with where they put the noise detonating yeah. and how they manage the acoustic glass, but still. It's yeah. it's really, most people are not going to have a problem with this, combined with the fact that this is a really compelling, interesting package, at least in 2021. It's a very here and now thing, but I think, the again, it's a very cohesive SUV thing that I think is extraordinarily good. Yeah. Uh, this is a really good product for what it is, if not really close to the top of its class. Um, I'll be curious to see how it ages, um, but this is really the best that Hyundai and Genesis, Genesis can do right now. I prefer this over the GV80. I do too, and I shouldn't because the body structure in the GV80 is better, but this is just a far better driving experience, and some of the features make way more sense, plus the looks. Yeah, it, it does. Again, I think this is a great looking SUV, and the interior looks pretty good as well. So here's my question to you, Mark. If you are one of the people who's buying a vehicle like this, you are image conscious, you want to keep up with the Joneses, because that's why you're buying a luxury SUV, do you think this badge and the dealership experience and what this car has to offer and its relative lack of prestige is enough to get someone out of their BMWs, Audis? No. So who's <laughs> going to buy this thing then? Because it's more money than an Acura. It's more money than the Japanese rivals, right? An NX is less money than this. An RX is less money than this. And this doesn't have the prestige of, I'm John BMW, I'm John Porsche, I'm John Audi, I have a Mercedes Benz, who the hell is gonna buy this car? It's somewhere in between. And until you know they get the brand recognition out there, which they got a lot of work to do, I feel like this is just gonna be the upgrade from the Japanese competitors. That's what this is. And it is, to me, in a lot of ways, just as good as the German products but you're not gonna convince somebody that has always had a German product to jump to this. Um, but this is a tipping point. I feel like this could potentially lure somebody away from an Audi product, for example. I don't think you're gonna get somebody from the BMW Mercedes camp, but it's, it's, it's definitely closer to the Audi and a little bit more interesting. And I like the fact that there's more physical controls in here. It's a way more traditional experience that's not overwhelming on the tech side. And that's the part where you might see you, the cannibalization to or from some of the German brands, but I don't know. That That's not on me. That's up to the customer to decide. All right, Mark. So with that, let's head into the final thoughts. All right, Jack. Final thoughts on the GV70. We kind of talked to death who this is for and who it's not. And the bottom line is it's an excellent mid-tier luxury car. And 
you're gonna appreciate the styling, the interior design and attention to detail, the ride quality and refinement, the audio system, essentially everything that you could possibly want from a vehicle like this at this price point. And it's different. It's different from what the Germans are doing and it's different from what the Japanese are doing. Combine that with the drivetrain, the twin turbo V6 is a rocket ship for most people. The transmission is one of the best setups that Genesis and Hyundai have ever done. It's far more competitive with basically everybody else and falls somewhere in the middle ground. Again, it struck this balance and it is entirely worth your time to go and drive it. Some people may be turned off by its quirkiness, but honestly, I think once you get in it and just go through the software, go through the infotainment, go through its feature set, you're gonna really enjoy driving this car. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.